Someone posted this in the K9 Aversion Facebook group this morning, and I wanted to talk to you about it. I saw this and I got really upset because it's impossible to avoid dogs. People say, oh, you don't like dogs? It's simple. Just avoid them. Just whatever. Don't get one. It's not that simple because everywhere you look, you see dogs. They are at cafes, pubs, restaurants. They are in gyms. They are in libraries. They are in schools. They are in hospitals. They are in assisted living facilities. They are in supermarkets. They are in airplanes. They are on the subway. They are in buses. You name it. Dogs are there. And we don't need to have physical contact with a dog in order to become upset. The very sight of a dog whether in person or even in an image or a video, can be very upsetting to a lot of people. They elicit fear. They elicit feelings of profound disgust. Think of the way many people react when they see pictures of snakes or bats or centipedes, cockroaches, rats. A lot of us look at images of dogs and react negatively you know, contrary to what the management at Amazon and other places might think, not everyone loves dogs. Not everyone responds positively to images like this. A lot of people really, really dislike dogs because dogs are ruining their relationships, because they associate dogs with disease, because they are aware of the damage and the destruction dogs are causing in our society uh, by uh, destroying uh, grass, killing grass and trees and, and polluting our water and driving people mental with their barking, uh, harassing and threatening people, uh, killing livestock, driving many species of wild animals to extinction polluting the environment with their untreated waste, which spreads disease, which can be life-threatening, and which can make you go blind or become crippled and paralyzed. It goes on and on and on and on. And I've made many videos in which I talk about these things. So why is it acceptable to insert dogs into places that have nothing to do with dogs? It is virtually impossible nowadays to watch a commercial on TV that does not include a dog, even if it's something that has absolutely nothing to do with dogs. They still insert dogs into ads, and we can't avoid these images of dogs. Many people are very offended by these images of dogs, but not just offended. A lot of people have PTSD because of dogs, and these images trigger uh, their PTSD. As I've discussed in many videos, more than 77 people every single day in the United States are undergoing reconstructive surgery because of dog attacks. That is a lot of people who are scarred for life, who are traumatized, who are never going to be able to live a normal life again because their faces have been ripped off. And not just those victims, but their loved ones who have had their lives severely impacted by these dog attacks, they also do not respond positively to images of dogs. And they also, in many cases, suffer from PTSD, especially if they were present during the dog attack. Because of all of these reasons, I think it's inappropriate for Amazon to display this image of a dog when they can't find the page you're looking for. It's unnecessary and it's inappropriate. So I decided I would contact the company. For those who don't know, Amazon is crazy about dogs. This is a company that is run by dog nuts. A lot of dog nuts work there. If you don't know, there are over 7,000 dogs that quote unquote work there. You can find articles like this all over the internet. They are crazy about dogs. It is a company that is full of dog worshippers. So you can just imagine the culture, the unhealthy environment, the lack of empathy for 
the workers. We're going to get to that later in this video. Uh, as I've discussed a lot on my channel, dog worshippers uh, possess psychopathic characteristics and they are often lacking in empathy for others and uh, are extremely selfish and narcissistic. And so when you have an entire company run by dog worshippers, it makes for a very interesting environment. Anyhow, I decided to contact the company and uh, I went to their website and I had to log into my account in order to contact them. So I logged in, I saw this, I was asked to indicate whether my query was order related or not. So I clicked the button that said not order related. Uh, then I saw this, it asked me to tell them more, I had to make a selection. Uh, I clicked the drop down arrow, I selected other non order topics. Then I had to make another selection by clicking another drop down arrow. Uh, and there I selected give Amazon feedback. And then another drop down arrow appeared. And I was asked to make another selection. Uh, I selected opportunities for improvement. And from there, uh, it showed me this that they said that they would be happy to hear from you and please use one of the options below to contact them. There was only one option at that point and that was to start a live chat, which I did. I wrote, not everyone likes dogs. Dogs disfigure more than 77 people every day in the USA. So when you display, sorry, couldn't find that page with a picture of a dog named Otto and a message, meet the dogs of Amazon. Many people are offended. It is so unnecessary. Why are you shoving dogs down our throats when they drive so many people crazy with their barking? Kill 30 to 50 and bite 4.7 million every year in the USA. They also kill 60,000 worldwide with rabies every year. There is no reason to glorify them and shove them down our throats like this. Like I said, a lot of people hate dogs, so I suggest not displaying an image of something that a large portion of the population finds offensive. At first, someone called Shira appeared online and wrote, how may I assist you? At which point I just repeated what I had already written and they never responded. And eventually uh, I was disconnected from the chat. So I tried again. Did the same thing, and then this guy, or person, Sagar, responded and wrote, I'm so sorry to hear about this situation. To be frank, even I don't like dogs. I'm scared of them. Well, I apologize for this situation, and considering the above information, which I was not aware of, I will right now report this issue to our marketing team and will also note your feedback to our internal department and will ask them to look into this and remove the dog images which are displayed when the item is not on Amazon, as many of us are getting offended and don't like that idea. As many of us are getting offended. So that means I'm not the only one and he's heard this before, or, well, he obviously, I'm saying he, Sagar sounds male to me, he feels the same way. So at this point, there was a cross post and I responded before he had finished uh, writing. I responded to the first couple of lines that he had written and I had asked him if he could maybe forward my message to someone in management. I asked him that before he indicated that he was going to do that. And uh, I felt very satisfied with his response. And honestly, it wasn't what, what I was expecting. He wrote, I will escalate to the higher authority as well so that appropriate actions will be taken on them and they will change the dog theme and try something else which can be universally accepted or loved like nature, plants, tree, flowers, etc. Yes, why not? I have that power to escalate it and get it done. Oh, that's when I asked if he, would gonna, he was going to... Uh, forward my message to someone in management. I wrote, wow, thank you very much. Yes, they should display images that are more neutral and universally appreciated. And he wrote, so do not worry, I am with you. I will get this done from the higher authority. I wrote, thank you so much. He wrote, please be rest assured. And I felt really happy with that. I felt that that had gone very well. And I shared that in the K9 group on Facebook and someone, a member wrote, nice approach, but as the perfectionist I am, I have a few constructive criticism 
We must make this kind of commentary complaint as a group, not just as an individual. A lone person will not have the power to influence change in major management, much less in a gigantic corporation. If more people complained in unison, much better. If lots of people complained as a strong, loud group organization, the very best. A form of future contacting them should be requested, otherwise your complaint will get into the Amazon black hole with gazillions of other complaints they receive every day. The representative was polite and in accordance with your points, but they are well trained specifically for doing that, make you feel satisfied. It does not necessarily mean they will follow through. So I thought about that and then I responded to this individual. I wrote, how do you make a complaint as a group? When you leave feedback on their site, the only way to do it is by logging into your account. A group cannot have an account. How do you suggest we do this as a group exactly? I think a better approach is for more individuals to do what I did. If enough of us flood their system with individual complaints, we will have an impact. Now, I don't know if we're going to have an impact or not. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel I feel glad that I did what I did. And uh, I would encourage you all to do the same if you feel as outraged as I do. Now, let's talk a little bit about Amazon. Many websites praise Amazon for their pro-dog strategy. And they claim that allowing employees to bring their dogs to work makes for happier employees and makes them perform better. And that it's just all around very positive to allow people to bring their dogs to work. Thankfully, other websites are more rational and point out how dog-friendly offices are not always healthy offices. Uh, Someone here wrote, The times I've spoken up, some colleagues have been personally offended I've shunned their fur baby. People have said a few times that I should get therapy to resolve my dog issue and that maybe I'm not allergic at all, just think I am. Again, see, here we go, dog worshippers having no empathy for others. This makes it challenging to fight against the rising tide of dog-friendly office spaces. When so many people love having their pets at work, but the presence of a pooch in the office can make people physically sick. She, she said, people loved having a dog in the office, so I felt bad, almost ashamed when I'd have an allergy attack. This is ridiculous and so unacceptable. People have enough stress when they go to work. They don't need this added stress of having allergy attacks and then wondering, should I say something? Should I not say something? What are my colleagues going to think of me? Uh, blah, 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 blah. We don't need this. It's ridiculous. She tried to stick it out at her dog-friendly office. She said her boss was really sympathetic towards people with pet allergies and did try to keep her dog in her office, but it always escaped and inevitably would end up at my desk. This is what I'm talking about when I talked about how it's not the owner, it's the dog in my video, Give and Let Live. Because the owner can be very sympathetic and try everything in their power to keep their dog under control, but it's the dog's nature to escape. It's the dog's nature to be intrusive. And no matter what the owner does, it's going to escape and it's going to intrude and it's going to offend other people because that's the dog's nature. That's why the problem is not the owner, it's the dog. Anyway, as I've discussed in my videos, uh, you can get sick. You can lose your nose, your arms, and your legs to gangrene, and you can die from capnocytophaga bacteria, which is present in the mouths of most healthy dogs. You know, and all it takes is a lick. People have died from a lick. That's it, not even on broken skin. Uh, It's rare, but it does happen, and I don't want to play Russian roulette with my life just because you want to bring your dog to the office, and nor should anyone else have to do that. And what really bugs me is how she says her boss is sympathetic to those with allergies. Well, how sympathetic would she be, I wonder, to those who just don't want to get licked, who don't want to have a dog uh, rubbing into their clothing and getting hairs all over their clothing, rubbing their eye crud and their snot into your clothing. What if you simply don't like dogs? How much sympathy do people have for you then? Most of the time, the answer is none. Uh, 
and they will view you as a monster. You are expected to pet and stroke and love on their dogs. And if you don't, you're some sort of cold-hearted, uh, horrible person. If you have severe allergies, people might be sympathetic, but they should be sympathetic to those who are uncomfortable, not even because of allergies, but because they simply don't like dogs. But that sympathy is lacking. We're told, oh, you just haven't met the right dog yet. And they believe that if you meet their dog, you're going to change your mind and suddenly love dogs because their dog is so wonderful. You just haven't met the right dog. Or if you tell them you are afraid of dogs because maybe you were bitten by a dog, their response is not one of respect or understanding. Their response is, well, you just need to be around my dog uh, because my dog will help you get over that fear. Uh, and they want to expose you to their dog as some sort of exposure therapy. They think that's the solution. Instead of respecting your feelings and <laughs> not wishing to impose their dog on you, which would be the sane reaction. I've never heard of a snake owner whose response to someone who is afraid of snakes is to thrust their snake onto that person as some form of exposure therapy, you know. But as I discussed in my video about how uh, dog owners have psychopathic characteristics, dog worshippers are very selfish. They are lacking in empathy and they only think about themselves. In my experience and in the experiences of many of my viewers, dog worshippers will react with hostility when you say you don't like their dogs or you don't want dogs around you. There is no such thing as a hypoallergenic dog. According to the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America, it's a protein in the pet's dander or dead skin flakes saliva, and urine that causes a reaction. And it doesn't matter what length the animal's hair is or how much it sheds. These allergens can stay airborne for months. Months! And cling to walls, carpets, furniture, clothing, and other surfaces long after the animal is gone. The situation was stressful for Maria, particularly being in a small office. She developed an ulcer from the worry. I didn't want to make waves in the office or be labeled a dog hater because I did like the dog. I was just allergic. What if she was a dog hater? You're allowed to hate dogs. Why are we not allowed to simply hate dogs? Even if you aren't allergic, you should still be allowed to say, I am uncomfortable with dogs, I do not want your dog around me, and that should be respected. This whole thing about bringing dogs into offices is wrong, and it needs to stop. Dog worshippers are so selfish and lacking in empathy, they expect us to purchase and take antihistamines, you know, anti-allergy medicines that have side effects. They don't care about us suffering from side effects. All they want to do is bring their dogs to the office. They don't care about anyone but themselves. And to get an ulcer because you're worrying about the dogs at your office, I mean, you have enough stress with your job. You don't need this added stress, like I said. This is so crazy. How do people who work for Amazon really feel. Remember I was talking about this organization being run by dog worshippers uh, and the culture that ensues when you're dealing with a group of people who are suffering from a mental illness that is as yet unrecognized by the medical community. It will be, mark my words. I found some articles I will share in the description with you. Let's have a closer look at Amazon. So it says here that Amazon employees, most of whom described an intense, often cutthroat workplace where senior managers encouraged their reports to attack one another's ideas in meetings. An internal phone directory includes instructions on how to send secret notes about colleagues. Workers suffering from cancer, miscarriages, 
or other personal issues are penalized or pushed out, as are any employees who don't meet the company's high standards. Many Amazon employees resort to weeping at their desks. So we're dealing with dog worshippers who, like I said, are lacking in empathy, are very selfish. So when you look at a, a company where the majority of people working for that company are dog worshippers, you are going to have a culture that is lacking in empathy, a culture that is very selfish, and a, a culture that is very sick, which we're about to see here. This is something I read back in 2015, and this was around the time when my feelings about dogs and dog owners were really beginning to change, and I was beginning to see them for what they truly are. This article was very much part of my awakening, I guess you'd say, and I want to share this with you. The link is in the description. She writes about the rigorous hiring process at Amazon. And uh, she, she describes, you know, the, the, all the interviews she had to go through and how she was told that, uh, you know, you can bring your dog to work as though that's like something that's really great. She writes, we live in such a dog adoring culture that it's hard to admit when you aren't totally enamored of them. What you are supposed to feel, what you must always feel, is love. And dog owners are blessed with the extraordinary ability to call bullshit. They can sniff out your limp pats, your half-hearted game of catch. Soon the question comes, oh, you don't like dogs? Translation. How can you not like dogs? How can you not like my dog? When a dying baby's in the street, do you kick it till it fits in the gutter? <laughs> a perfect description of dog worshippers. Uh, she goes on to write about how when she was nine years old, she was traumatized by her cousin's unneutered dog. The dog sexually assaulted her. Now, for those of you who haven't already seen my video called Dogs and Sexual Harassment Assault, I urge you to watch it. I'm going to talk about something right now that was posted in the Caniner version group recently. I'm going to go off topic for just a couple of minutes just to show you what's happening like, this is happening all the time, and people laugh it off. They think it's funny, like it's some kind of joke. It's not. It's crazy. Dogs are sexually assaulting people every single day, including children. And it doesn't matter if the creature that is assaulting a person sexually is human or not. It is still unwanted sexual behavior, and it's still unacceptable. Get a load of this. Someone took a screenshot of this. Uh, someone wrote, did I ever tell you about the first time I met my friend's pit? Since we're all stuck in the house, I'll share. We were going to get house for, we were going to get house for a drink. I don't know. After a rough night working at the bar and I walked in the door and this dog threw me onto the couch and immediately started humping my face to completion. He is a sweet pup. And I, fuck, I hate that word. And has never done it since and his owner was so shocked she just stood there and she'd never seen him do anything like that i have no words neither did either of us we just sat there laughing and crying so the owner just stands there and does nothing while the dog rapes this person's face first of all get the dog off your friend what is wrong with you you don't just stand there and do nothing and then to just laugh about it there's nothing funny about this. So getting back to this article where this woman describes working for Amazon, she also describes being sexually assaulted when she was around nine by her cousin's German shepherd. She said her cousin would let it go on too long. Like they always do. Whenever their dogs sexually assault someone, they let it happen and they just stand around and laugh about it. And she she was very upset by the whole thing, but then she describes how her cousin just made light of it and joked about it. And, oh, when are you coming back to visit? Max misses you. Ha ha ha. Big joke. Would you say the same thing if it was the uncle that humped her uninvited or, or, or the male cousin that came up to her and started humping her against her will? Would they laugh about that too? I honestly wonder because they seriously have no... I don't even know. It's like not only a lack of empathy, it's just a lack of decency. It's just so sick. So anyways, she, you know, ever since, never felt comfortable around dogs. Understandably. 
So she started her job in July, and she knew that the following May they were going to be moving into a luxurious mega compound. All of the employees were going to be working in this new building that was going to be full of dogs. She was worried about that. She was already noticing that many of her colleagues were dog worshippers. She talked about this one colleague. She was feeding her dogs pills so that its urine wouldn't kill the grass. And the author is like, what, there are pills for that? There is a $70 billion per year pet industry behind all of this that is trying to sell us all manner of useless, unnecessary items for our useless, worthless dogs. <laughs> They're making so much money selling everything from sex toys for dogs to pills that make their urine less harmful for the grass. It's Ridiculous how much money they're making off us. That is why we are being brainwashed through repetitive slogans, advertising to believe dogs are wonderful. Everyone's walking around like a bunch of hypnotized sleepwalking zombies or something. Because there's so much money being made. This is a huge industry. And our minds are being controlled. We are being deceived and manipulated by it. Anyway, she was encouraged by an email sent out by the department head, Scott Reynolds, who asked, can each of you reply back to me if A, you have allergies to dogs and to what degree? For example, can't be on the same floor or just can't pet them. Or B, are afraid or don't like dogs. Can't be on the same floor indicated there might be dog-free floors, which made sense. A multi-billion dollar corporation that had built out space in their complex for nap rooms, outdoor decks, and organic vending machines had surely carved out a few dog-free floors for those of us who wanted to work in a yip-free environment. I speedily typed back my response. I'm allergic to dog hair, can't be around furniture or whatever for very long that dogs have been on. Scott asked, so if someone had a dog in their office or at their desk, would that create problems? She replied, I am allergic, but to be honest, I don't really love the idea of working around dogs. I would like to be on a dog-free floor, if that's okay. Scott never emailed back, which she took as a sign that things were being taken care of. Two months before they were supposed to move, she emailed Scott's assistant to ensure that her space on the new dog-free floor was secured. The assistant replied that Scott had never said anything to her. She was told that she would need to take up her quest to be dog-free with human resources, which she did. Deb, the human resources representative, handed her a form uh, that she would need to have filled out by her doctor. And so she had a look at the form and saw that the first question read, if your patient is limited in his or her ability to work in an environment in which dogs are present, is it safe for him or her to be in such an environment for a limited period of time? If yes, please state the maximum amount of time that your patient may safely work continuously in such an environment. Well, she could see that they were gonna make things very hard for her. Please fully describe the extent to which your patient would be limited from working in an office environment in which dogs are present. Please include a description of the symptoms or consequences that your patient will experience if he or she works in such an environment. Attach additional pages if necessary. Can these limitations be fully or partially migrated or offset with appropriate medication? There we go with the medication again, right? Is your patient able to work in a building where dogs are generally... Blah, 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 blah. All of these questions. She got this ridiculous form filled out by her allergist's assistant, who recommended she work on a dog-free floor. Soon after she returned the form, Deb called her back into her office. Can you go back to your allergist? We need them to fill out more of this form. She limply handed the paper back to her like it was a half-completed test. Sorry, what things? she asked. Well, we just need her to elaborate on and clarify some of these points, she said. It was ridiculous. They made things very difficult for her, and why? She said to Deb, you know, I don't see why an allergy should make a difference. I think if you don't want to work around dogs, that should be enough. Well, Deb stared at her and blinked. I am sure Deb thought, what kind of person doesn't like dogs? What sort of monster are you?
She asked Deb, are there dog-free floors? And she was told that they do make special accommodations for the severely allergic, stressing the word severely. So in the end, she was granted her request for a dog-free room. There are no dog-free floors at Amazon, but she did get an office. She was assigned a very crappy office, the only windowless office on her floor, which she had to share with four other people. Clearly, this is discrimination. Then she describes the extremely weird dog culture she was immersed in. She was describing images she was receiving in an email of people's dogs dressed up in Halloween costumes and invited to bring her dog to work and dress their dogs up in Halloween costumes for Halloween. And not only is dog culture extremely bizarre, but it is dangerous. And she describes that here. During a fire drill, she writes, I waited for one girl in front of me to walk her dog down 12 flights of stairs instead of just picking it up. She dragged it down by the leash, then picked it up, then set it down, then picked it up again. If this had been a real fire, we would have burnt to a crisp. <laughs> you know, that's ridiculous. How is that allowed in an office building? I can't understand. And then she describes the whole atmosphere... She felt like an asshole because people's dogs were constantly wandering into her office and then the owners would be like, oh, Peanut, Peanut, get back here. Get away from her. Uh, and then scooping up their dogs and apologizing. So, you know, she felt singled out and just like shitty. Again, people shouldn't have to deal with this at work. They have enough stress as it is just with their jobs. They don't need this added stress. She wrote, I became convinced that I would like the dogs more if our dog-loving culture wasn't so weird. There were buckets of doggy treats at the receptionist's desk and $4 gourmet sweet potato dog biscuits in the vending machine. In the kitchen, there was a sign written in a puppy's voice warning owners not to take their dogs out onto the 12th floor deck. My cuteness allows me to get away. Ugh, crazy, these people are so weird. When she joined the company, she signed a two-year work contract with a bonus that she would have to pay back pre-tax if she quit early, so she stuck it out for as long as she could. When she left six months later, it was not because of the dogs, but for the lack of work-life balance that the dogs were meant to cover up. She explains that the longer you spend at Amazon, the more weekends you are expected to surrender. Still, employees rarely vacated before their two years were up. There is nothing more soul-crushing than paying back money to one of the richest companies in the world out of your own wallet. I ran into my boss shortly after he broke the news of my departure to Scott and Deb. I told Scott and Deb about you leaving, they said. Oh, we're sad to see Karina go. Yeah, she was great. <laughs> this was so insincere that Deb and Scott couldn't amble down the hallway to say goodbye in person, told me all I needed to know about the sincerity of their well wishes. They didn't care about her. They treated her like garbage, because that's what dog worshippers do when you tell them you don't like dogs. She writes, I went back to the offices a few months later. With me gone, the dog-free room is no longer, and the guy who sits in my old spot brings his puppy to work every day. New guy's dog pees on the floor, but he still brought it to meetings, and he expects his office mates to watch the puppy when he needs to step out. Because they are already running out of space in the new complex, managers in her department squeeze several employees plus their dogs into one room. Now this sounds like an absolute nightmare to me. This is hell on earth. It's discrimination against people who don't worship dogs. And I don't know how this is tolerated. It's like any other form of discrimination, you know? It's like discriminating against someone because of their skin color or their sexual orientation. They should not be allowed to discriminate against someone because of their feelings about dogs. We need to shine light on this. I mean, this needs to get out there. We need to do something. I'm so upset by this. Ever since I read this article, I've been trying really hard to not deal with Amazon. Many people boycott Amazon because of their unethical work practices that are non-dog related. I'm not going to get into those too much. I'll put some links in the description for you to read, but 
Amazon employees have to pee into bottles because they are not allowed to take bathroom breaks. Workers at Amazon in Poland uh, are treated like absolute garbage. Many jobs involve highly repetitive movements, lifting heavy goods and boxes, pushing heavy carts. Uh, the, the warehouses are running day and night and the workers have to work these crazy shifts that are very unhealthy. And the continuous stress, noise, physical exhaustion, and lack of time to rest between shifts, yeah, it affects their health. And uh, so there's a high sickness rate. And going on sick leave is, like they explain here, for workers, going on sick leave is a way to get rest and repair their health. But for Amazon, it is a cost factor. To bring down the sickness rate, Amazon Poland hired a company in spring 2017 which checks whether workers are at home during sick leave. A worker who was dismissed because of a sick leave wrote, At Amazon, we hear about safety every day, about health. But the reality is different. Not everyone can keep up the race at Amazon. People are treated like machines, but even machines fail and stand still. We are not allowed to do that. Reddit Dog Free also has an entire thread about Amazon, which I'll link you to. Just ridiculous. Look at this image. For the elevator, they include a dog. It's just so crazy. We're dealing with a very, very sick company. And the dog worship is a symptom of an underlying sickness within the company. Just like dog worship is a symptom of an underlying sickness in society. Here's the bottom line. Of course, it's true that an Amazon boycott very likely won't accomplish much. The company is so vast and has become so ingrained in our culture that it's nigh impossible for a critical enough mass to make a real dent. Still, decoupling your relationship with Amazon any way possible helps you, at the very least, become a more conscious consumer. Amazon's business imperative is to make everything frictionless and easy. It wants there to be no choice but the cheap Amazon products right in front of you with the click of a button. It wants all consumption to be powered by its own engines. Put together, there is a growing movement to quell Amazon's recalcitrant growth. It may seem like an unwinnable battle, but if Amazon's size concerns you, the only way to go forward in the coming year is to be both informed and intentional. And those are two words that go against Amazon's business strategy. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.